How's it going YouTube? Jay here and welcome to the next installment in this series of quick start videos covering the core elements of the exposure triangle. Now in the last video we covered aperture. I've put a link to that video in the description if you haven't watched it yet. And today we will be discussing shutter speed, going through what it is, how it's measured and the effects different shutter speeds can have on the images you take. Every camera has a mechanism within it called a shutter. Some cameras have electronic shutters, some mechanical and some a combination of both. Shutters are basically doorways to your camera's sensor. When you take a photograph, the shutter opens and closes in quick succession for a predetermined amount of time, exposing your sensor to the light that is passing through the lens. The amount of time the shutter is open is referred to its shutter speed. It should come as no surprise then that shutter speed is measured in seconds, or in most cases, fractions of seconds. The bigger the denominator, the faster the speed, so one one thousandth of a second is much faster than one thirtieth. However, shutter speed can also be extended into much longer periods of time, such as minutes, even hours, depending on what you are trying to photograph. Now, shutter speeds available on your camera will usually double or half with each setting change. As a result, you'll usually see shutter speeds falling into a pattern much like this. Just like we discussed in the aperture video, a change from one speed to another will either double or halve the amount of light hitting your sensor. Most if not all digital cameras have a shutter priority setting, usually indicated by a T or TV symbol on a control dial or menu. When using this setting, you will choose what shutter speeds to use, but the camera will automatically take control of other settings like aperture and change them accordingly to achieve a correct exposure. Now, this is a great setting to use in situations such as sports photography, where shutter speed is paramount to capturing action and you often don't have time to fiddle around with different settings. But as with all the semi-automatic modes on a camera, it does still have its limitations, especially in lower light situations where you do not have a fast enough lens to maintain faster shutter speeds. When considering what shutter speed to use in an image, you should always ask yourself a couple of questions. First, whether there's anything in your scene that's moving, and second, how you would like to capture that movement. You can either choose to freeze that movement entirely, or let an object or subject intentionally blur, otherwise known as motion blur, giving it a more, much more dynamic quality. To freeze motion of, say, a person running fast, you will need to select a shutter speed of around 1 500th of a second or faster. But on the flip side, motion blur of a person walking at an average pace should start to become apparent around 1 30th of a second or slower. Now these are, however, all relative and will ultimately depend on how fast or slow your subject is moving. So be prepared for a little bit of trial and error to get just that right shutter speed for your intended effect. Intentionally using slower shutter speeds is where you enter the realm of long exposure photography. Choosing speeds of whole seconds, and in the case of astrophotography, even minutes and hours can be used to great effect. A shutter speed of multiple seconds can make flowing water smooth and glassy or moving traffic into long, indistinguishable streaks of light. This can all add a much more dynamic element to your image and really make them pop. Be prepared though, as the ability to maintain correct exposure when choosing such prolonged shutter speeds may require additional equipment such as a neutral density or ND filter if there is too much ambient light in your scene, but I'll save a full breakdown of ND filters and their effects for another video. Finally, an important factor to remember when choosing shutter speeds is camera shake, which can completely ruin an image. In general, hand holding your camera at anything under 1 60th of a second is generally not advisable unless you have some kind of image stabilization or very steady hands, unlike me. To be safe, it is best to place your camera on a tripod or solid surface and either use a remote trigger to initiate your shot or choose a shutter delay if your camera has that function. So that about wraps up this quick start guide to shutter speed. The next video in this series will be covering the final element of the exposure triangle, which is ISO. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you next time.